So we're back on the canal, uh, the Ashton Narrow Canal today. This is the very top of the Ashton Canal as it exists today. Um, from where we started on our right hand side is a lock which leads up. And that is a separate canal. Yeah, that's actually the Huddersfield Narrow Canal, which was the full size Huddersfield Canal. This section of canal was also full sized. It runs along to a basin. It flows along to Fairfield uh, Basin. It's Portland Basin, this area that we're in. Um, as I say, this is the section where it, it just joins the other canal, you wouldn't even notice. It's just a lock gate, but the basin, just before, the bridge we'll see very soon. Um, I'm pretty sure it leads to Peak Forest Canal, um, at that turning. It used to join Hollingwood Branch, which also had another branch leading off it from Fairfield, so it's straight all the way to Fairfield, then we'll have some lock gates that lead down into Manchester city centre where it joins the Rochdale Canal, but there's a river here too, so it's Tame side, uh, the River Tame, the River Tame joins further down to the River Goit, and I don't mean the river's inner Goit, it's called the River Goit, those two join, the Tame, and the guy and they become the River Mersey that's just before Stockport Viaduct so it's a very Mancunian river it flows through Manchester and it is created by two Manchester rivers so all this everything we can see around us is all built mainly on cotton in the Industrial Revolution other things were traded but the Industrial Revolution took place. Um, in the current market in 2020, wool from sheep, once it's sheared, is actually being burnt by farmers because there's no profit anymore in the wool. So Manchester UK, kind of reached the culvert there. So I have to retrace some steps down by the River Tay, as I've said. I'm expecting rain. So I'm just going to go as long as I can before the rain. So it's a modern bridge. And we've seen culverts on other canals. It looks like a fairly long tunnel. 37p a kilo. And one farmer said it cost him more than that to actually shear the sheep. So they're literally shearing the sheep and burning the wool. There's no money in the cotton or wool industry as it stands today. That's so interesting, I think. So it shifted from one industry to another because it's still a very prosperous ta town city. <laughs> um, there's a lot of property development going on in Manchester at the moment, though, and it's becoming a very pricey area to live, very exclusive area. So we're back on the canal. See, the mills are dead giveaway. I knew if I followed that culvert towards the mill, I'd find the river again. And the canal. River Tame was also another river that flows in Manchester. I think it flows down to Cheshire. Not sure if it joins the Mersey or anything like that. So back to the River Tame. There's an aqueduct along this canal which crosses the River Tame. So that's what we're here to get. We're on the Ashton Canal again. Um, we started from Portland Basin. Saw a culvert at the mill. A couple of barges along here. But we'll get to the Peak District soon, and that's a separate canal once again. So the Ashton and Peak District canals 
will be one playlist. And then we'll go back to Bridgewater. So we can cross over there if we want. We're not going to, we're going to go under and look. Whilst plenty of people live on the canal, as they always have. Right, so there's old stuff mixed in with new stuff here. And this is Portland Basin. Uh, incidentally, it reaches up to where that next basin is because there's no lock gate until then. So it's all Portland Basin, the Portland Basin section. Okay, so there's an old Ashton Canal warehouse, 1834 that was built. Oh yeah, know some stuff, you know me. <laughs> just having a laugh. It's just off the cuff sometimes. Very random. But what I don't know is where this goes. What I do know is we're near the aqueducts, I was just saying. Which is handy, isn't it? A lovely bridge over there. Portland Marina as well, which is usually where they sell boats, uh, boats, a lot of interesting bridges. That water appears to be black in colour, that's not just an effect. And the bridge is 1835. Sandstone there. My favourite things, my favourite pieces of engineering, aqueducts. There's an old bridge for the railway. So we're not going off in that direction, or any direction, so I'll work out where we are. It's our one aqueduct that crosses the Tain, the marina. And the canal that branches off is actually the peat forest. I sort of pretended to make it more interesting. I, I was aware that that was. But it's the only other canal that connects to this one. I also know that the other one runs under the road uh, in Joylesden. Uh, and there's other branches all over the place basically in this area. also a Stockport branch, and a Stockport and Stratford branch, it's only about 10 metres long now, I have seen it, but it's further down and it's in the, the very last section, so the last movie will be the last section which connects the town, where of course we have the Islington branch canal. Notice the lower bricks from a much older building. We did film it, but I never explained that. That's a sharp branch that runs around inside Manchester uh, warehouses. Um, there's another branch that links to the Rochdale Canal. Uh, besides, you know, down in the Piccadilly Basin, there's an extra connection. So that's another branch. There's five branches all in all. One was not completed fully. I'll explain all the branches in the very last movie because as we walk down I've also got to mention that we didn't go up to the Huddersfield canal yet and we didn't follow the Peak Forest Canal just yet so we've got to get um, the second aqueduct there's some lime kilns from where they used to make pottery and, you know, things from lime uh, that's further up, they're no longer there but we're going to find some evidence of older stuff basically like 
to do. Oh, you can wave if you want. There you go, hi. Uh, some of the areas around here I'll explain. Um, also further up there's what's called a pillbox. Um, they're military concrete boxes, you see them all around Great Britain. They were installed during the Second World War, I believe, not the first. Um, and Hitler's invasion in the Second World War was seen as a real threat in Britain. So all very interesting, I am sure. So I've got to get back to town now, it's about to start raining. I don't like filming in the rain. It's the colours don't turn out very well, that's all. We've got most of what we came to see here. So pillboxes, if you see them today, they might seem like a bit weird. Um, the country was militarised. Uh, to defend itself in case of the Nazi invasion. So there's all on the canals, there's concrete boxes where there's just turrets for a gun can stick out. Uh, they're all over the place, they're on beaches. Uh, that's what they're for. They tried to fortify the country during the Second World War. So this is an overflow down into the river. So some things were running behind schedule, like the link in Piccadilly. This is the older stonework. So the Rochdale Canal should have been completed and still wasn't in 1798, along with the Portland Basin link over to the Peak Forest Canal. And the rain is starting. Which is the aqueduct we saw. There you go, it's going on the lens. Just like to say, this was a full size canal at one point. Not always a narrow canal. Along with the Portland Basin link over to the Peak Forest Canal, which is the aqueduct we saw. So Benjamin Outram is well known for designing canals in the early 1800s. He was commissioned to finish off the canal, which he did, and that's why these them two areas do actually stand out a bit, because they're quite well designed. Just to get the job done, we got the best in, just to finish it off because it was running, the funds were running low. Incidentally, the Manchester Ship Canal was supposed to be privatised, so it was owned by the people. The private business stepped in in the last minute, and the owners of the Manchester Ship Canal is actually the Bank of England. And I always thought it was Peel, but Peel and then people had a consortium who had friends in London. The friends in question were actually the Rothschilds family. So the Bank of England, the Rothschilds, actually lent the very last few pennies to build the ship canal because it was running short. But they know what they're doing, you see. They ended up following the ship now. The City of London owned the Manchester ship canal. I've only just become aware of that. Along with other people who would have had private shares along with the bankers. Uh, the River Tame, which becomes the River Mersey, it rises on Denshaw Moor, it's north along the Pennines uh, to its south. So it starts north along the Pennines, travels south at the top of the Pennines it drops. It's westerly from the east into Manchester, through Manchester south. It's the highest point in Greater Manchester, Black Chew Head it's called. Um, the source is actually Yorkshire. The highest point in Greater Manchester, as I said, as it joins Yorkshire. It's an ancient seabed up there. You'll find fossilised shells at the top inside the rocks, inside caves. Uh, which was sand that was compressed over millions of years which becomes the sandstone that we know and love today and use everywhere. This will just run through what we've seen today. Uh, Peak Forest Canal, the start of that. 
they're the aqueducts. The mill, which was next to the culvert under the supermarket, uh, was Cavendish Mill. The canal here in this section was actually once called Manchester and Ashton Underline Canal Company Navigation. It's now called the Ashton. I think that's better. Uh, the Portland Basin it was near the museum. It also has a brilliant water wheel and some working, but the museum was actually closed. Uh, Junction Mill Chimney is what I got a picture of, 1867, 10 feet tall, heading bottoms in the coal, 1831, so the 1830s made cotton in that area.